So, in the last lecture we discussed about the combination rules, we spoke about the truncation of modes, we also spoke about the static correction we want to avoid the higher modes. Now, we take up an example and show that how the modal combination rule can be employed for different categories of problems very quickly by a simple example. So, we have taken this example where I have got 4 degrees of freedom problem omega 1 omega 2 are given to me. Though in the example showed you in the last lecture we have clearly said that the modal mass participated from the first mode is closely around 90 percent. We need not have to look for the contribution from the higher modes, but still just for understanding to operate this rule see how it can be done. Let us say for example, I want to know the maximum response in the first level of the mass concentration may be the first flow in the given problem. So, if I know the responses in different flows independently how can I combine them to get the maximum response because one is interested in getting the maximum value by some combination rules. So, I have picked up an example of 1 and 2 let us say for example, for mode 1 and 2 I have the values of omega 1 and omega 2 here. So, let us compute beta very quickly. So, beta in my case is going to be omega 2 by omega 1 which is going to be 1.05 by 0.36 which becomes 2.917. Yeah. And zeta already we know it is 2 percent which is 0 0.02. So, in this given equation of computing the x 1 max what I wanted to know is the cross modal coefficients 1 1 1 2 2 1 and 2 2 because assuming that I will already know these responses independently. So, let us compute 1 2. So, i j i stands for 1 and j stands for 2 I should say 8 into 0 0.02 square that is zeta of 1 plus beta. So, 3.917 and 2.917 to the power 1.5 divided by 1 minus beta square. So, 1.917 the whole square of plus 4 0.02 square. Two point nine one seven and three point nine one seven the whole square. How much is this? This comes to 1.11 10 power minus 3. Okay. So, the cross coefficient the cross modal coefficient for 1 2 and 2 1 should be same let us check that. So, to compute rho 2 1 I must compute the ratio of beta which will be omega 1 by omega 2. which will be the inverse of this. Which is 0.343. So, can you find out rho 2 1 in the same manner? So, let us compute rho 2 1 in the same fashion as we did for the previous case. You will check that it will also become the same value of 1 2. Let us compute rho 1 1 
the cross modal coefficient with the same mode. So, for computing rho 1 1 I require beta this is omega 1 by omega 1 which will become unity. So, then rho 1 1 can be computed as 8 into 0 0.02 square of twice of 1 raised to the power of 1.5. So, this term goes away for 0 0.02 square 1 and 2 square which will come to 1 actually. Okay. okay. Anyway, the answer is 1.11 fine. Let us write it as 1 minus 2.917 the whole square square. Yeah. So, this comes to be unity. Similarly, you will check rho 2 2 will also be unity. Okay. So, one can easily find because I have the cross modal coefficients of all the four value, I have the independent responses, I can get the maximum response in any flow I want by this equation. This combination rule is what we call as complete quadratic combination rule which is CQC rule. This general rule which can be applied to find out the maximum response. Now, alternatively if the modes are not closely spaced, any questions here? If the modes are not closely spaced, what do you understand by not closely spaced? The modes are said to be not closely spaced if the modes differ less than 10 percent of the lower value. Then they are called closely spaced. Suppose if you have modes or if you have frequencies, if you have frequencies whose values differ successively less than 10 percent of the lower value, then we call them as closely spaced frequencies. Suppose in your example, if you do not have a closely spaced frequency, then the response max can be worked out using this rule, which is which is a simple statistical rule, which we call as square root of sum of squares. So, I made a square sum them up and took a root. So, the square root of sum of squares it is a very simple statistical combination which can be employed if the modes are not closely spaced. Suppose if you find or if you have closely spaced modes. The moment I say modes, I am always talking about frequency because you cannot actually compare the modes to be its closeness. Okay, I am talking about the frequencies. If you have closely spaced modes, then again you can find the maximum response in any flow, ith flow, using a simple combination, which is C to R, C, where this is applied where the summation is applied only for those
closely spaced modes. Only for those modes you can apply this and take the value, simply sum them up. So, these are the three different combination rules which are available in the literature with the help of which you can find the maximum response for a multi degree freedom system model if you know the mode shapes and frequencies and if you know the damping ratio as a percentage of your critical damping. Having said this, now there is one more level of complexity involved in computing the solutions for dynamic systems excited to prescribed dynamic loading. We already said what is a prescribed dynamic loading. Let us say I have a simple system Now, f of t can be any one of the following. Many examples of this order. All the above loading or prescribed dynamic loading. You already know what is a prescribed dynamic loading because the time history of the loading is completely known. But solution to equation of motion with such loads cannot be obtained or I should say difficult to obtain using the solution of differential equation of the equation of motion. Okay. Simply using the classical equation of motion which is second order differential equation, by solving that equation you will not be able to get solution for f of t which becomes a prescribed loading of this order. In such cases, what do we do? We employ a special type of integral called Duhamel's integral. Let us take an arbitrary loading as shown here. Let us consider an arbitrary load as shown below. The arbitrary load is here, this is my T, some load. I pick up this load for a small segment and I call this as T and this as of course, d t and this is my f of t for this problem. Of course, the vertical axis is showing the load. For an undamped single degree freedom system, 
we already know the equation of motion is given by m x double dot plus k x is f of t. The auxiliary equation can be written for free vibration we already know that which is m x double dot plus k x is 0 which is x double dot plus omega square x is 0 which gives me x of t as c 1 cos omega t plus c 2 sin omega t. At t equals 0 x 0 is 0 initially no displacement which implies c 1 becomes 0. At t equals 0 x velocity is x dot of t. So, let us say x dot of t from this equation is minus omega c 1 sin omega t plus omega c 2 cos omega t. We already know c 1 is 0 which implies x dot of c is c 2 omega says c 2 omega is x dot of t by omega therefore x of t is x dot of t by omega sin omega t this becomes my solution for the free vibration problem. Now, in the above it may be noted that there is a time lapse of t when you are measuring the response. Therefore, x of t can be rewritten as x dot of t by omega sin omega let us say t minus 0 when there is no lapse let us say t minus 0 this becomes my equation. For any value of t less than capital T, let the velocity be x dot of t. Therefore, x of t now becomes x dot of t by omega sin omega t minus t because I am implementing the velocity lapse also. Is that clear? Because there is a lapse of small t which is lower than the capital T which is the period of the loading. So, for that x of t velocity is replaced with the lapse of t minus t here. Now, out of this x of t let us pick up a small segment let d x be the small segmental response of the system under f of t. Okay. So, I can write d x as d x dot by omega sin omega t minus t. Equation 4. Now, this is my loading criteria.
as d t is very small as d t is very small the load will create an impulse okay and in such cases the spring force can be neglected can you tell me why spring force a restoring force now is an impulse force this will have a very high amplitude for a very short duration for that duration the restoring force can be neglected is it not you can always practically see any structure or any system excited an impulse force for a very short duration the restoration will only follow that okay so for that duration i can neglect the spring force therefore f should be equal to m a which is m x double dot which is m d x dot by d t so f d t by m is d x dot substitute d x dot in equation 4 i call this equation 5 substituting phi in 4 that okay d t you have d t equation 6 actually my interest is to find the x because d x is a segmental value of my response so integrity By. This is a classical integral which is called as Duhamel integral. There is another form of this, I can multiply numerator and denominator with omega what I get is omega by m omega square of integral which will become omega by k is that not of this. This is another form of integral you can use any one of the form for your calculations. Okay. Let us quickly apply the Dugamel integral for a prescribed dynamic loading and try to find the dynamic amplification factor for a given problem. Will for example, we take a single degree problem, we will apply this and see how I can use conveniently the Dugamel's integral for such cases, which has got a prescribed dynamic loading. Okay. Any questions here? So, we should be able to agree and understand how the Dugamel integral can be derived for an impulse function of this order, which I showed you for a prescribed loading. Okay. I will remove this, we will do one quick example and apply Dugamel's integral for this problem.
rectangular pulse load is shown in the figure. The figure is this. The durational load is yes, and for yes, the maximum value is F naught. What is asked is A, find A, the maximum dynamic amplification factor for. zero less than t less than s i call this as first phase this may first phase and of course this may second phase and also So, let us say A first phase 0 less than T less than S. We already know d x integral which gives me x is omega by k. I am using this form integral f sin omega t minus t dt. And this is varying from 0 to t and this is applied only for the phase where it is between 0 and s because after that f naught is actually 0. So, I should say during the phase of 0 to s this should be f naught. Okay. So, can you integrate and get me this value? So, I will get F naught by k omega minus of cos omega t minus t by minus omega. which will give me simply F 0 by k, of course, this applied from 0 to t. Cos of omega t minus t 0 to t, which will give me F 0 by k 1 minus cos omega t is that ok. This will be for a range 0 less than t less than s because after that there is no f naught it is becoming 0. Okay. I will remove this. We already know F0 by k is ecstatic. So, x is ecstatic of 1 minus cos omega t, and x by ecstatic is nothing but my dynamic amplification factor, which is 1 minus cos omega t. I am interested in finding the maximum value of this. So, let omega be. 2 pi by tau, I cannot use t because t is the period of the loading. Okay. I am using tau. So, then dynamic amplification factor becomes 1 minus cos omega sorry, 2 pi 
d by tau. Let us take d by dt of this and set it to 0 for d a f to be maximum. If I do that, I will get 2 pi by tau, that is the multiplier there. I get sin 2 pi t by tau, set it to 0 because I want a d f to be maximum. Obviously, 2 pi by tau cannot be 0 because I have a frequency in this problem. Okay. So, obviously, since 2 pi by tau cannot be 0, sin of 2 pi t by tau is set to 0. Therefore, I should say 2 pi t by tau should be either 0 or pi etcetera. Picking on the value of pi, I will see that t will be equal to tau by 2 is it not. Okay. Substituting this as pi, I get t as tau by 2. For t as tau by 2, my d a f maximum will be at t as tau by 2. d f is already given by this equation of 1 minus cos omega t substituted here omega you know is 2 pi by tau and t you already know. So, what is the value? 2 that is the solution for the a part of the problem. I want to know the maximum d a f for this problem. You will appreciate that we have not solved the equation of motion of this problem using the conventional equation of motion and the differential equation. We have used an integral because the loading is prescribed, it is applied only for a specific duration. I have used a Duhamel integral to find out the x. Now, the second problem, the second phase is you will see that at s t becomes s or t greater than s, f naught is 0, there is no load. But the free vibration of the spring system at response of t equals s will be there, okay, because the spring is or the system is going to respond here. So, we already have a general equation of x of t, we must find out x of t at s and x dot of t at s that will be my solution for me second part of the problem. Okay. Alternatively, if I have another loading here, which is f 0 by 2, then I have two components on part b. One component is because of the f 0 by 2 load on the duration s plus s plus 2, whatever may be, plus the vibration because of the initial conditions of first phase. Okay. In this case, we are not doing that, we are removing this. So, let us remove this. Any questions here? Any doubt? will remove this. Let us say I want to find out the second phase where t is greater than s. Now, we already know there is no loading during this period. you can see as seen from the figure. I am not drawing the figure here, you have the figure there with you. So, as seen from the loading diagram, you can see that there is no loading here. Therefore, the response during this phase depends on the free vibration response
of the system at t equals s. Now, for t equals s, x is given by x static of 1 minus cos omega t. and x dot is x static of omega sin omega t it means x s yes, that is t is equal to s yes, and x dot s yes, or x s t 1 minus cos omega s yes, x s t omega sin omega s. Yes. For free vibration, we already know x of t is given by a general equation. Can I write this? So, substitute back for x s and x dot s from this equation and get s. So, if you write that substituting for x s and x dot s, x will become x static. 1 minus cos omega s yes, cos omega t I should rewrite this as cos omega because I am looking for a value which is more than s yes, ok there is a lapse of s yes here plus So, x x t ok x s t by omega omega sin omega s yes, of sin omega t minus s. So, this goes away I get x s t of 1 minus cos omega s yes, of cos omega t minus s plus sin omega s yes, sin omega t minus s. Yes. So, x by x x t is dynamic amplification factor which gives me this value as it is. Now, in general, if x x x naught cos omega t plus x 0 by omega sin omega t, x max is simply given by the squares of these coefficients, okay. that is a general equation, which is nothing but x 0 square plus x naught 0 by omega square the coefficient squares applying the same algorithm by comparing this equation 
with what I have here, I must pick up the coefficients of cos omega t and sin omega t that is nothing but this value and this value. Square them up, take a root and find the x max is it not. So, I should say now the dynamic amplitude factor max is simply the square root of squares of 1 minus cos omega s the whole square plus sin square omega s is that ok. Expand it and simplify and see what happens square root of 1 plus cos square omega s minus 2 cos omega s plus sin square omega s I get this as 1 1 1 2 minus 2 cos omega s So, use this equation substitute back here and see what is the d a f max. You will see d a f max becomes twice of sin omega s by 2. Is that ok? this for the second phase. So, we have used the Hamel integral wherever there is prescribed loading available we have used the Hamel integral and evaluated x and of course, in this problem we never wanted to stop at x. The question wanted us to work out the dynamic amplification factor and maximize the value. So, we have found out that. So, when you have got a prescribed loading it is not advisable to use the solution procedure for the classical differential equation. You must use a shortcut method as you have seen in Dugamel's integral case. For all prescribed loading, you should use this, and this is a very common application in offshore structures. Okay. The loading is not always continuously applied, except that you have a basic loading which is continuously applied, whereas the instantaneous loads like seismic excitation, like wind forces should be considered only as a prescribed loading. They are dynamic because they vary with time and they are prescribed you have the full formulation of the load available to you, but it is rather difficult to use that in your general formulation for finding out the response of the system. So, people use Duhamel's integral as a tool to solve such problems. Though we have taken a very simple problem the same concept can be applied to multi degree freedom systems as well the only difference could be now the m and k matrices as we have seen here. Okay. So, this is what I wanted to explain. There is one more question which is generally left in mind is that when we do any iteration scheme, how does the iteration scheme land up in the lowest possible frequency. Okay. How you get omega 1 as the omega n of the natural frequency the lowest value. How? So, the question is why should any iterative procedure why should any iterative procedure converge to the lowest natural frequency or I should say the lowest mode because it gives me the mode shape also for example, stored law. Why? We can mathematically prove this. Let us say any arbitrary mode shape which you assume in iteration. In iteration most of the iterative cases you assume the mode shape is it not stored law 
Rayleigh Ritz procedure, you assume the mode shape actually, is it not? It gets converged, you are not assuming the frequency, right? Assume the mode shape, which you say is a sum of different modes together, okay? which we say sum of phi 1, that is the first mode plus some proportion of phi 2 plus some proportion of phi, is it not? That is what we are assuming. If you recollect Stored law, if you have the notes, I want you to see that. If you recollect Stored law, you will see that we already said phi 1 by omega square is phi 1 hat, which is the new value. phi 1 omega square with some multiplier will be your phi 1 hat. If you look back your stored law, you will see that there is a division here. Okay. This multiplier can be any value as you see from this above equation. So, using the same concept here, I say iterative scheme of any mode shape can be rewritten as q 1 by omega square 1 of phi 1 plus q 2 of omega 2 square of phi 2 plus q n of omega n square of phi. Okay. I should say hence, I am writing this. I keep on iterating this vector p number of times. So, after p th iteration, I may get this as p th iteration of phi is q 1 now. You will see the multiplier is always taken out, we have no assigned value for this multiplier. We use it later, it is a summation is it not? As omega 1 square p, I am saying p th iteration, this is not the multiplier, this is an iteration of phi 1 and so on. Q 2 omega 2 square of p of phi 2 and so okay. Agreeing that omega 1 omega 2 are natural frequencies of the system such that omega 1 is lesser than omega 2 lesser than omega 3, whereas the number comes from an ascending order. Okay. If you agree this, then you will see that the first value will be higher than the second value. Okay. the first term that is q 1 by omega 1 square p of phi 1 will be much higher than q 2 by omega 2 square p of phi 2 and so on. Okay. What does it mean? The proportional weightage of this value on the first mode is higher. Okay, it will converge to the first mode automatically. Okay. Since the weightage is higher, it will converge to the first mode. Okay. So, that is why in stored law we say that iteration scheme will converge to the first mode that is the lowest frequency. Okay. 